In 1965, the Beatles' tour of the United States set the country on its ear. The album Help was an instant hit. In 1968, when they decided to set up Apple Records, America was the market in those days. You had to have America. And uh, I was the only executive they knew. They sent for me. We set up Apple Records, and then I came back and ran it for them in America. Ken Mansfield was in the right place at the right time. At least that's how he sees it. Propelled into the center of Beatlemania, Ken was the man in the U.S. for the Beatles' Apple record label. The thing that happened to me is I didn't get it. I didn't, I wasn't a fan of the bands. I didn't realize that they were that great to me. I'd been working with so many bands and like big splash and then they go away and I just thought the Beatles would, would have their time. And I wasn't in awe of them. And I think they sensed that. It also opened the door of a lot of other things in your life. What happened to you? It's just like, you know, the way the devil works. It's just little by little, you give up another little piece. Well, it's okay if I do this. And pretty soon I was immersed in it, just like anybody else, and it became a part of my life. Ken moved upward and onward after sensing a Beatles breakup. He became president of MGM Records. And still wanting more, Ken left the corporate world and started Hometown Productions Incorporated signing on some of the biggest names in show business. Ultimately, where did this lead you, this, this lifestyle? Well, ultimately, it led to an incredible downfall. And it's an amazing thing, Scott. Nobody had a better resume than I did in the record business because I had not only the Beatles, but with all the other famous people, and I was vice president and president of major companies, all these hit records, all this success. Uh, never been fired, never failed, but all of a sudden things just start falling apart. And but one day I just uh, found myself just totally bottomed out, broke, lost everything. Losing everything meant Ken Summer Estate on a quarter mile of California oceanfront, a mansion in Hollywood Hills, servants, money, power, you name it, Ken lost it. And I end up in Nashville, Tennessee with three cardboard boxes and three suitcases, broke, out of work. Um, whoa. So this young lady walks into my life and big, big green eyes and southern accent and, and, uh, and um, she just uh, set me straight. How did she do that? She said, Jesus is the way. And I said, I agree with you, honey. He is a way. There's many paths up to the top of the mountain. And she said, no, he's the way. We had more fights over that. This green-eyed southern girl named Connie made it clear to Ken that she chose Jesus over him. I thought, if she loves Jesus that much, maybe she's got a better idea than I do. And uh, she brought me to the Lord. Married for 20 years, Ken and Connie have an interesting life together, ministering all over the country, using Beatlemania as a platform. Well, Ken Mansfield uh, was one uh, is someone that was associated uh, intimately with the Beatles. He is very much a part of musical history, and uh, he's become a Christian, and he has a fantastic story to tell. I had heard him in Sacramento, and I just couldn't wait to get him here. An incredible story of how, you know, really an irreligious person, uh, and now, you know, a Christ follower, and uh, very committed, and just uh, a great man, and has worked with many, many groups, and is uh, really a missionary to the performing arts community. I need somebody help, not just anybody help, you know I need someone help.